If you will be using Canvas for chemistry, I want to show you a type of question, a question feature in Canvas that can help you out so you don't have to create so many different versions of questions and you can see if students actually understand a concept by having the questions use a formula to randomly generate numbers so that you don't have to create them all yourself. You're going to go to Canvas and create a quiz and you can put some details and such this is not a full course, it's just a shell of a course. This is just used to show you this. Go to questions, create a new question, and then here you're gonna select um, formula question. This is the similar process for both old quizzes and new quizzes. So we're gonna paste this formula here, just the Haber. Haber-Bosch process for ammonia synthesis, the exothermic one, um, and then what we have here is we can answer, we can ask a question. So when you create a variable in these, you need to put the variable, which is what the computer is going to assign a random number to in your specifications, in square brackets. So we can say, um, with excess hydrogen, how much, okay, I guess we should actually be more specific here. With excess hydrogen, and a certain mass of ammonia. So let's say we were typing it out like a normal question. Um, 12 grams of nitrogen. So with excess hydrogen and 12 grams of nitrogen gas, how much ammonia can be synthesized? So we would want students to go from grams of nitrogen to moles of nitrogen, moles of nitrogen to moles of ammonia, moles of ammonia to grams of ammonia. So if you want to be specific about what type you have, the way that I tend to ask students this is I'll put answer and then this blank here cannot be actually interacted with. You can't actually interact with this blank. The whole purpose of that blank is so students know that I'm looking for grams of ammonia. So I can copy and paste this. And that lets students know that I'm not looking for moles. Now I could also say what mass of ammonia. So what mass of ammonia can be synthesized in grams. Something like that. You just want to be specific. You don't want people guessing what units you want it in. So there's just various options. You can do however you want, of course. Um, but in this case, we don't want everybody to have 12 grams of nitrogen. We want to put a variable here. You could put anything here as long as this is in square brackets. Um, you could type out the word nitrogen. You could put cat. You can put anything you want. I'm going to keep it simple, and I just use letters, single letters if I can, sometimes multiple. If you were doing, um, say, the like a gas law question where you have initial and final, then you might, want, you might want to put P1 and P2, V1, V2, whatever it is. In this case, it just makes sense to use an N. I'm using capital N. It is case sensitive, so if you put capital N here and then try using a lowercase N at the bottom, it will not work. So with excess hydrogen and a certain mass a certain amount of grams of nitrogen, what mass of ammonia can be synthesized in grams? What's going to happen is the computer is going to pick random numbers within your specification for the mass of nitrogen. So that's why this variable popped up here. Let's say I had another variable, P and uh, dog. If I click off, we see that P and dog will populate. Now I don't want those, that's just showing you that things in brackets become variables that you can play around with. So now it's just back to mass of nitrogen. I want my mass of nitrogen to be some number that the computer picks between 4 and, I don't know, 19. Now, here's the thing. Canvas does not do sig figs. So you're going to have to come to a little silent agreement with your students. Um, if you want to assess sig figs, you're going to have to do it in some other way. You can, use sig, you can use Canvas to assess sig figs, give them a number and ask them to pick the number of sig figs, for example. But in terms of working with the real chemistry of it, sig figs is just not a thing. Um, I tend to try to stick with three, but that's not always possible, as you'll see here. So we can specify the number of decimal places. I'm going to put one. This area here is just an example value. It, to it shows you a value that meets your specifications. There's one decimal. There's one digit after the decimal place, and it falls within four and 19. You can click recompute multiple times and see example values. Now I just hit one. Let's try again. 13. So 13 is within 4 and, fi 4 and 19. Notice how this trailing zero that should be there is not there. Canvas does not do trailing zeros. 
Um, so that's where you lose that sig fig and specificity aspect. So it's a limitation of Canvas. So what you can do here is you can recompute multiple times just to see it should fall within your range. Here's where you have to be careful here, which is putting in the formula. So knowing stoichiometry, of course, you can do the stoichiometry, the dimensional analysis, and you'll see that the process will be the same for all students. The only thing that will change in this particular problem is the mass of nitrogen. So the moles, the mole ratio, everything will be the same. So when I do this, the only thing that will change is n. When you're putting variables into the formula area, you do not use the brackets. The brackets are used in the top to alert Canvas that that is a variable. What's inside goes down here, so I'm just putting it in. And then I want that to be times. Now for dimensional analysis sake, I'm going to do all the numerator stuff on the top. I'm going to put ones, even though you don't need to, of course, just because I might copy this code later and use it for something else. So 1 times 2 times oops, 17 0.03. We know that is the molar mass of ammonia. I'm dividing that by, now this is all the denominator stuff, 1 times 28.01 times 1 times 1. So this is just a very explicit way to show um, how it is. I don't recommend skipping a bunch of steps right now because it can get a little bit confusing when you're putting those codes in. And the last thing you want is to have a bunch of wrong answers simply because you put the formula in incorrectly. But luckily, there is a way to check that. If you click Save, you'll see that it actually computes it. The computer is going to say that if you have 10.9 grams of nitrogen, and it were plugged into this equation here, you should get 13 grams of ammonia. Now 13 does not look specific enough, so you can change the number of shake figs. Now of course this breaks the rules of shake figs because we don't want that many. So like I said, come to a silent little agreement with your class and say, hey, when you're doing math on, or you're doing chemistry on Canvas, three or four sig figs. And um, that works out for us, so 13.3. Now this is the important part. When you are down here, you need to generate a certain number of solutions. So if you have 30 people in your class, it might be helpful to generate 30 different possible combinations. That way everybody does have something different. But the rules of math are going to say that if you do have a very narrow range, and there aren't even 30 possible numbers within the range, so in this case we looks like we're good, yeah. But if you have a very narrow range and there's not that possibility, it will repeat things. Um, but in this case, it's fine. So if we offer 30 different possible combinations, the last thing is to generate a tolerant so that a little bit of rounding error is okay. I will usually go by percentage, but you can also do an absolute number. So I do 2% and now I can generate. It's going to go through and calculate and generate all those possible answers. So if a student gets 5.5 um, grams of nitrogen gas, then the answer should be 6.7 grams of ammonia. And they can put anything that's plus or minus 2% of this number and they'll be fine. And the numbers are far enough apart where by chance it's not likely that they'll get it right. Um, unless the numbers of course are really close together, but in that case it's just you know a little bit of rounding error. Then you're gonna click update question. When you click update question from the teacher view it has just like what you have typed in but it has the square brackets around the variable that you decided to put. To see what it looks like on the student view click save and then go to preview and then you can see that for this version it has 14.4 grams of nitrogen you can put in no letters so if students try putting in letters they'll give them a warning tell them that in this box you don't put units only numbers but if you put in some number like this and then click submit if you allow your students to see the answers they will see the answers as you specified it with a number of decimal points or number of digits after the decimal point that you say so they could have put 17.5 or something within the plus or minus 2 range. It is inclusive. So if you have students who'd like to do the calculator dump and they put every digit in there and you're, you don't really care about that, then it will take their answer. Um, that it, It's just completely algorithmic. So if they put 17.49321567 whatever, it'll take it because it's within that narrow range. So that's how you use the formula question. Setting it up is a little bit of work, but you can save those to question banks. I'd actually recommend you create this um, in a question bank and then you can reuse it. 
and that way you don't have to actually sit there and type in multiple different versions with different numbers yourself by changing the number of nitrogen. Good news is when you go back in, you could copy that. So let's see, go back to edit. For questions, you can go in there, edit this, so copy and paste it, and then you can have a question where you change, where you give them a fixed amount of nitrogen and then change for hydrogen. You might want to use H, for example, whatever. You could also use this question if you wanted to ask them how much heat is involved or how much XYZ. There's a lot you can do with this um, with this type of question format. Just keep in mind that Canvas and SigFigs, they don't really mix.